There she is. So because I am a fourth year student, I need to complete my uh, final year senior project in order to graduate. A final year project is basically like a piece of work that you have to come up with using all the knowledge that you've accumulated over the years and finally put it all into this sort of your masterpiece. And with a mechanical engineering degree, there really is a lot that you can do. I have friends that are working on air conditioning systems, renewable energy, and uh, even robotics. Personally, my team and I, we chose to do a what's called an exoskeleton which is like an external frame that attaches to your body to help you move around and there are two types of exoskeletons the first one is called passive and that's where you use things like springs and other components that don't require you to put like put like external energy into it and by external energy i mean like sort of like battery or petroleum or whatever the second type is called an active exoskeleton which is where you use motors and other components that require energy input like a battery. Specifically, we're making the exoskeleton for the knee because we feel like that walking and using our legs in general is such a big part of our life. However, a lot of exoskeletons that we've seen in the market is typically suited for either, either walking or running, mostly walking. And usually what happens is the person has to get up on their own before they can start using the exoskeleton. Pretty much that's where we identify the problem is the part where you have to get up. Like just think about it. If you have trouble walking or running, you're probably going to have trouble getting up especially if you have like a muscle weakness disorder or something and yeah you can get up using your hands in some sort of way probably or if you have another person to help you that can be great but you know being independent is always a plus so we want to make an exoskeleton that can assist the user in standing up as well as walking and the challenge of that is we have to produce a lot of torque output there is a lot more torque involved in standing up than there is in walking and what that means is that there's got to be a lot of reduction in the transmission and the motor is going to be kind of heavy so we have to optimize all of that in order to make sure that you know it's comfortable for the user it's got great ergonomics and safety here's going to be all the parts for the, uh, the frame we're going to be using acrylic i'm not sure how well that's going to go but our professor suggested it and here are motor Outputs about three newton meters of torque. The Arduino controller and uh, the motor driver. So I had actually just went upstairs to my uh, my lab, meet up with a couple of my friends, and uh, we had worked on the uh, exoskeleton for a bit, and uh, and now we have to go buy some aluminium sheets for the uh, braces for the legs. Back for the day, there's actually around 6.8 million Americans who need, who need to use some sort of assistive technology in order to uh, help them get around, in order to help with mobility. Okay, so now the uh, aluminum braces have been ordered. They said that we're gonna be able to get it tomorrow. Although I've got a full day of class tomorrow, so I might come get it on Friday. Right instead. So now we're going to another place called Mega Home. We're gonna go look for some more components.
couldn't find a spot in the shade, but this is gonna have to do it. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda lost. Can't seem to find my friend. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me through this mask, but I'm going to try to speak as clearly as I can. So pretty much everybody has left the lab. I didn't film most of the uh, project discussions and works during the lab because it was kind of loud. And I'm not exactly sure about the uh, recording and filming policy for my university. So yeah, pretty much everybody has left the lab. I stayed over kind of late just to explain you guys about what I'm actually doing. So of course, before we began this project, we had to actually verify that this project was needed by the market, needed by people. You know, there were people that wanted this device to be made. And what we found was that the global prosthetics and orthotics market is projected to grow at around 4% every single year from 2019 to 2027. And it's expected to reach around $8.18 billion by 2027. So because this is a device that's gonna essentially stick to the user, you know, the user has to wear it all the time. We have to consider things like comfort, ergonomics, usually things that engineers don't worry about, but in this project we kind of do. And of course, safety is also super important. Specifically speaking, the torque that we're trying to provide to the user is around 25 to 35 newton meters. That's just a rough estimate because, you know, we don't actually know how much we're going to be able to amplify the torque through the transmission after all the uh, designs and assembly has been finished. So pretty much this is like the uh, main part of the acrylic frame. This is going to attach the upper leg, which is also called the femur. And here we have a connecting bar between the upper leg and the lower leg. This part's gonna be attached to the lower leg. And the reason we split these in the lower leg into two pieces is because we wanna be able to accommodate things like misalignment and um, certain uncertainties because, you know, not all humans are made the same and uh, our shape, our legs are shaped kind of differently. So this is designed to accommodate that. We're supposed to have a hinge connected here and another one here so that you know when you attach it here it can provide sort of like some displacement in this direction and these are the holes that you saw us drill today so we also have this acrylic piece that was glued together using super glue as you can see right there and what it's supposed to do is be the uh, it's supposed to be the mounting base for the motor because all right let me bring this here this is going to be sort of like the rail for this motor mount and the reason we did it like this was because we want the motor to sort of be able to slide up and down the frame because what's going to be connected to the motor is a bevel gear and the bevel gear is going to be connected to a larger bevel gear to transmit motion. And the thing is, in case of when the uh, motor malfunctions, when it provides more torque than the user is asking for, that can, you know, hurt the user. We want the user to be able to uh, manually disable the, uh, the system by just simply like pressing a button and then there's going to be a spring attached to the motor here attached to a plate. And when the user does that, it's going to uh, retract the motor back. And then the gears can disengage and uh, the system can be easily stopped that way. Obviously, we're at the uh, very, very early stage of the assembly right now. There's supposed to be a shaft coming up here connected to a pulley. And here as well, there's supposed to be a gear here, of course, and another pulley for uh, more reduction and uh, some belts. Okay, I don't want this video to end up being too long, so so this is all I'm going to show regarding the project today. I'm sure I'm going to make more of these vlogs where I show my project, so if that happens, I'll provide more explanation about the, uh, the project that I'm working on. Alright, let's just pack everything up and go home. Last person is going to close all the lights. I think that's, that's it. Cute little dog. But before
before we actually head home, I want you guys to uh, to meet somebody. There she is. Come on, say hi to the camera. Hello. There you go, buddy. Stray dogs are actually a huge problem in time. I'll be careful there. And, uh, I mean, if my drone allowed her to, like, you know, stay in my room, I probably would adopt her, but I just have no choice right now. My home's kind of far away from here, and uh, my mom doesn't really want a dog in the house. Because she's such a good girl, she's getting another one. Oh man, she looks like she's in pretty rough shape. Last time I saw her, her fur was like quite clean. She's actually got a white fur and <laughs> I know in the camera it looks like she's kind of brown and grayish, but I don't know what she's been doing. Man, she finished the second bowl super quick. I think she's still hungry. Gotta be super hungry. Just look for it. How about these, huh? Come on. There you go. I think you're full. Come back soon, don't worry about it. You just have to be here. And we're finally back. I think our food is here. <laughs> Alright, so it's around 12 something AM right now after I had after I had the uh, the dinner. I worked on my homework for a bit. It was a robotics homework. I'm taking a class called Robotics and Embedded Systems this semester. Uh, we had around two problems. Yeah, we had exactly two problems of homework, but I'm not really good at coding. It was like we had like two Python problems and, you know, that took me around like two hours in total. And uh, after that, I showered, browsed on YouTube a bit, and I guess it's Time to go to bed. I usually sleep around like 12 to 1 a.m. in the morning. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and be sure to subscribe to stay tuned.